It's time again for African Folktale Theater, episode number 11, entitled The Wolf Queen. I'm Mr. McCoy, your host. An old sultan who had ruled his land for many years had to ride through a forest one day. It was a beautiful summer's day and the birds were singing in every tree, but the sultan didn't hear them. His thoughts were with his wife, who had died a few months earlier and over whom he was still grieving. His people wanted another sultana, but not one of the ladies of the court appealed to him. It was hot and the sultan was thirsty. When he came to a woodcutter's hut in the forest, he sent one of his attendants to knock at the door and ask for water. A beautiful girl opened the door. She was so beautiful that the soldier who had knocked at the door couldn't believe his eyes. He completely forgot why he had knocked at the door in the first place. Impatiently, the sultan sent for him. Why are you standing there dawdling? Don't the people have water for us to drink? Forgive me, my lord, said the soldier. I did want to ask, but the girl who opened the door is so beautiful that I was dumbstruck. The sultan went to see for himself, and indeed he had never seen such a delightful being before. He drank some water, thanked her politely, and went on his way. But he could not forget the girl's face. The following day he went to ask for water again, and the third day once more. Then the girl began to feel afraid because she could see that the sultan was in love with her and intended to make her his sultana. Now, one would think that any girl would be only too happy to become a sultana, but this simple woodcutter's daughter was already in love and wanted no other suitor than the handsome young vizier who, to whom her heart belonged. After the third visit, the sultan stayed away for a few days. The girl was happy because she thought that he had decided to choose another wife. But just as she was beginning to relax, the sultan came riding up one day on a pitch black horse with a blood red saddle cloth and copper bells that tinkled as the horse trotted along. Amina, he said, I want you to be my sultana. Will you agree to be my wife? But she quickly made a plan to create a delay. I don't have any nice clothes. First you must bring me a silver dress. Fine, said the sultan. Then she ran to the house of the vizier to ask for his advice, but he wasn't there. The next day the sultan arrived on a snow white horse with a silver saddle cloth and silver bells that tinkled as the horse trotted along. Here is the dress, he said. But Amina hardly looked at the silver dress. No, that's not enough. Uh, first bring me a gold dress. Fine, said the sultan. Then she ran to the house of the vizier to ask for his advice, but he wasn't there. The next day, the sultan came riding on a chestnut horse with a golden saddle cloth and gold bells that tinkled as the horse trotted along. Here is the dress, he said. But Amina hardly looked at the golden dress. Ah, uh, no, no, that's not enough. First bring me a dress made of diamonds. Now the sultan began to get impatient, but Amina smiled so prettily that he promised to do as she had asked. When he had left, she ran to the house of the vizier once again. This time he was there and Amina told him everything and asked for his advice. There is a way out, the vizier said when she had finished. Take this magic ring and always wear it on the middle finger of your left hand. Also, take this wolf's pelt. If the sultan comes tomorrow and he wants to take you to the palace, go to your bedroom, pull the pelt over your shoulders, rub the ring, and then sing the following words. Nezodini, Ja Termina Bunga, Bira Bira, Nokiala, Bira Bira, Nokiala. The following afternoon, the sultan came riding on a dappled horse with a saddle cloth studded with diamonds and crystal bells that tinkled as the horse trotted along. Here's the dress, he said. This time Amina admired the dress and asked the sultan to come inside. Wait here in the waiting room, she said. I want to go and put it on. But instead of the dress, she pulled the wolf's pelt over her shoulders, rubbed the ring and sang the words that the vizier had taught her. The sultan waited for a long time, but when Amina had still not appeared after half an hour, he knocked at the door of her bedroom. When there was no reply, he opened the door. 
On the bed lay a wolf with its head on its paws and flashing eyes that watched the sultan's every move. When the sultan gripped a sword, the wolf jumped out of the window. Of Amina, there was no trace. With a heavy heart, the sultan returned to the palace because he knew now that he would never take Amina back, never take her back there as a bride. But Amina would not get off so lightly. When she rubbed the ring to take on her human form again, she had forgotten the words of the song. She wandered around in the wolf's pelt, aimless and afraid, until a group of hunters found her. Look, it's a tame wolf, said one of the hunters, as Amina stood so frozen with fear that she couldn't run away. They caught her and put her in a cage on the estate of the vizier, but he was still in bed and knew nothing about the matter. That afternoon, just before sunset, a couple of the hunters brought some water and a piece of meat for the wolf, but didn't want to eat a thing. It will die of hunger, said the one. Oh well, it won't be our fault, said the other. There is more than enough food here. Are you going to dance at the house of the vizier's brother tonight? Yes. When Amina heard this, she was filled with a burning desire to attend the dance. She thought and thought, but only when the sun went down did she suddenly remember the words of the song. She rubbed the ring, and when she had returned to her human form, she ran to her father's house in the forest and put on the silver dress. That evening, she was the most beautiful woman in the hall. Everyone was talking about the unknown sultan's daughter, but no one could say where she had come from. Amina danced with the brother of the vizier, but nowhere could she see the man she loved. Where is your brother then? she asked at last. My brother is ill, but he will surely be here tomorrow evening, he replied. Then Amina slipped out of the hall, went home, and exchanged her silver dress for the wolf's pelt, rubbed the ring and sang the song. After that, she went back to lie in the wolf's cage. When the sun rose, she had forgotten the song once again. The next evening, even more guests arrived. The food was more tasty and the music more lively. Of all the pretty women, the unknown poetary with her golden dress was the most beautiful. But once more, the vizier wasn't there. When the hunters came to the cage the next morning, the wolf was sitting in a corner, as usual. That evening, the dancing reached its climax. All the guests wore their best clothes. The lights sparkled as never before. Two orchestras took it in turns to play music, and the guests danced non-stop. But the most beautiful of all was the poetary in the diamond-studded dress. But the vizier wasn't there. At the crack of dawn, Amina went to exchange the diamond-studded dress for the wolf's pelt and crept into the cage. That day, the vizier got out of bed, and while walking around the garden, he came across the cage. And now, what is this? He asked one of the hunters who was standing there. The hunter told him how they had caught the wolf in the countryside. Then the brother of the vizier arrived and he told him about the beautiful poetary who had attended the dance. Could it have been the woodcutter's daughter? Wondered the vizier and he went to stand in front of the wolf's cage. Amina, he called. The wolf ran this way and that, but couldn't say a word because it was still early in the afternoon and Amina would only remember the words of the song after sunset. But the vizier knew that it was Amina. He opened the door of the cage, grabbed the wolf by the throat, and ordered his guards to kill it at once. Then Amina appeared more beautiful than ever before, and the vizier embraced her and took her to his home. Later, the vizier became a sultan, and he always called his wife the Wolf Queen. So what is the central message of this African folktale? Share with your fellow listener. And our next episode is number 12 entitled Van Hunks and the Devil. Yes, it will be truly incredible.